Hello loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been so long and I have missed you all so 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 much. So for today's video I thought I would do a Valentine's Day romance recommendations because today is Valentine's Day so happy Valentine's Day on the day that this is being posted as Valentine's Day. It's the day before so I guess happy Valentine's Day. Um, but I wanted to give you guys some of my favorite romance recommendations. Now these books are more happy romance recommendations. They're not like come back to me by Mila Gray, like break you into two, make you sob at 3am kind of books. They are happy, happy books. So I have a giant stack right here to recommend to you guys today. I have six recommendations that I have read and then I have one recommendation that's not really a recommendation. It's more like what I will be reading this Valentine's Day that I wanted to share with you guys. So the other thing to keep in mind is I actually have two different kinds of books today. I have some YA books and then I have some new adult books as well. So there is some more mature content in the new adult books and then there's the YA books. So since I've only done one book recommendations video, I just wanted to remind you guys how I'm going to be kind of doing this. So I'm going to tell you the title of the book my star rating, give you a little blurb of what it's about, and then move on to the next one. So it's not an in-depth review, it's just kind of an overview and a recommendation to you guys. So three of these books are some of my absolute favorite books. They were five stars. I love them to pieces and I think about them all of the time. Um, there's just one book that's not included in this and that is Come Back to by Mila Gray, which is one of my all-time favorite romance books, but that is more of a break your heart, snap it into two kind of book, and that's not what this video is about. So we have three like that. We have two that I really enjoyed, but were more of a four star, but I think that you guys would really enjoy, and those are a bit more of the mature books. Um, and then I just have one of my guilty pleasure books, one of my nostalgia series um, that I have to recommend to you guys as well. So without further ado, let's just hop into the video and the recommendations. Would it really be an Ellie Reads video if I didn't recommend this book? And that is why we are starting with it because this is one of my favorite romance reads and it is Whatever Life Throws at You by Julie Cross. Now don't let the cover fool you. Like myself, a lot of people really avoid covers with people on them um, for the content in the books, but this will not disappoint you. This was my all-time favorite book for so long until I read Crescent City by Sarah J Maas and From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and Come Back to Me by Mila Gray. Those are like my top four favorite books um, and this one is included in that top four but it is so so good. So in this book our main character Annie Lucas starts off with a move so that her dad can coach the Kansas City Royals. When they move she has to make a bunch of different new friends and she just has to adapt to a different lifestyle of being the coach's daughter. Once she is the coach's daughter she ends up meeting Jason Brody who is the irresistible playboy young rookie. So this is a forbidden romance between Annie and Jason and it is so so sweet so tender and loving it is a, just a beautiful kind of first love um forbidden romance and it is one of my all-time favorites so another thing about this book is it is a sports romance obviously it's baseball her dad is the new pitching coach um and jason is the star pitcher so there is a sports romance but it doesn't play a huge factor in the sense that you don't have to understand baseball in order to really enjoy this book Jason Brody is like the communication king. He is so gorgeous and I just, he was my favorite book boyfriend before I read some of my other um, favorite books. So he is just amazing and I love this book with all of my heart. It was a beautiful five stars and I would do anything to read this book again for the first time. <laughs> My next Valentine's Day romance read recommendation is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talita Hubert. So this book follows Chloe and Red. It is a split perspective and it is so fun and so sweet. This book is about Miss Chloe Brown and she hates Red. Now Red doesn't know what he ever did but Chloe just hates Red. Chloe also moves out of her family's house and into an apartment on her own. Now this is a really really big step for Chloe because she has a chronic illness and it makes life, everyday life, just a little bit more difficult. And she decides that she's going to take back her life from the chronic illness and 
create the get a life chloe brown list this list has a bunch of different tasks from going camping to going out on a night on the town is that the expression um and it is so so sweet however because Chloe has been kind of sheltered in her life with living with her parents, and this is her first time moving out, she needs a teacher. She needs someone to guide her through her endeavors. She doesn't know where to start with this list, and that is where Red comes in. So Red is this super sweet, big, tattooed guy who is just so caring and patient with Chloe. He is the apartment building's like superintendent, I think. I think that's what he is. He basically takes care of the apartments and like does basic fixes around here and there um, and lives in the apartment complex. So he agrees to help Chloe with her list and this is a beautiful enemies to lovers tale with some wonderful representation for chronic illness and people of color. So if you're looking for a super sweet but fun enemies to lovers. This is definitely the book for you. It's super smutty and it is so, so cute. One thing I do have to mention with this book is the fact that it is told in third person. I believe the rest of the books that I have to recommend to you guys today are told in first person, but this one is told in third person, which might take a little bit of time to get used to. I know it really took a minute for me to get used to because this is actually the first book that I read um, after re-jumping into reading and starting the channel and bookstagram and everything like that. Um, that was in third person so it took a little bit of an adjustment but it was really really fun. I also loved, I'm just remembering all these fun things, it's been a while since I've read this book but I just remember really enjoying it, is that there is a lot of English slang in this book which I thought was so 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 fun and I just loved reading so definitely give this book a try. <laughs> So I think you'll find that there's a bit of a common theme with the books that I read. It's Forbidden Romance and Enemies to Lovers, and that's pretty much all of the books that I have to recommend to you guys today. So hopefully you guys like that theme um, trope as well. If not, I'm sure that there will be videos in the future that focus on different um, tropes, but these are the ones that I love. These are my favorite ones. These are the ones that I would read myself on Valentine's Day. So they're the ones that I wanted to share with you guys, which brings me to my next recommendation, which is Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. Now this book is one of those books that lives in my head all of the time, but it wasn't an immediate favorite, if that makes sense. Like it was a book that when I read it, I was like, I love this, but I didn't realize how much I truly loved it. So it is a Enemies to Lovers, You've Got Mail retelling. Now I didn't know it was a retelling and I can now see why it is a retelling because the premise is basically the same, but I didn't immediately recognize it. And had I known it was a retelling, I probably wouldn't have picked it up because I hate retellings. Um, I'm learning to love retellings is a better way of phrasing that I guess but it is absolutely amazing and it is one of the books that when I see it on my shelf I just smile it's something I don't realize I reckon I've some as I said before it's something I didn't realize I loved so much this book is about Bailey also known as Mink so Mink um, is her online persona or name username title and she talks to a guy named Alex on there. They have so much in common, favorite movies, songs. They just absolutely enjoy each other's company so much and they don't know who they are in real life. And then Bailey's parents are divorced and for the summer she ends up going to live with her dad who coincidentally lives in the same town as Alex. Now, instead of telling Alex that she was going to live in his hometown, she decides that she's going to embark on the journey to try to find him herself whilst trying to find Alex she has to get a job at the local museum and she meets Porter Roth. Now she absolutely despises Porter. Porter is this tall gorgeous like irritatingly charming surfer and he is just gets under her skin and she hates him but little does she know that Porter Roth is actually Alex so the person that she loves talking to online as Mink um, is the person that she hates in real life as Bailey. And before you guys come for me saying that it is a spoiler, it says on the back that Porter is Alex. So it is so good. So I would definitely recommend this. And if I wasn't reading the book that I am reading this Valentine's Day, I would definitely be reading this book. Now this book is a book that is so nostalgic for me and I love it a lot. I have read it all the way through twice. 
but I have read three quarters of it through like six times. I just, I get to where the problem occurs and I say, I need to be happy. So I don't read it, but it is one of my all time favorites. Now it's one of those books that's showing its love. I dragged it back and forth from school for years. Um, but I love it a lot. So it is My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Wow, it looks really good on camera. In in real life, like, she's, she's kind of, she's, she's, she's been through it. Now, this is the ultimate first love story. Now, Alex approximately was so cute and so tender in first love. And so was Whatever Life There Is That You by Julie Cross. Those ones were so cute, so tender, first love, gorgeous. This one... It's just that times 10. It's that times 10. So this is about our main character, Samantha. I never know the character's names. I love them so much. Then they live in my heart, but their names always escape me when I go to film. But Samantha, and she is the daughter of a politician and her life is modern. It's clean, it's cut, it's no complicated. She has a job, she does swimming, she gets good grades. She's like the perfect child and her mom holds her to that. Their life, again, it's clean, it's sleek, it's modern, it's uncomplicated, it's kind of boring. Um, and her next door neighbors are the Garretts and they are just that beautiful, big, bustling, loud family with a million kids. Their yard is just splayed full of toys. I think that's like the correct expression. It's just filled with toys. It's loud, it's giggly, and it is just the life, polar opposite polar opposite life to Samantha's. It's just like night and day. And she is just so intrigued by the Garretts. So Samantha often finds herself kind of watching the Garretts enthralled with their life. It's kind of like watching Good Luck Charlie, like it's just this happy big family. And one night her and Jace meet. It is a forbidden romance between Samantha and Jace. And it is so nice and it's so beautiful and it's so sweet. It really, I don't know, like I don't know, like I don't know what else to say. Like it's just this really sweet contemporary romance of first love. So the problem is that she finds herself falling so passionately in love with Jace, Jace's family and the future that they could have together when something unthinkable happens and she really struggles with what the right thing to do is with the scenario and what she knows. And she really just finds herself over at the Garrett's house and it is so, so nice. So this is my recommendation for you guys for a sweet Valentine's Day book. The next two recommendations that I have for you are just kind of like fun recommendations. And the last one isn't actually a recommendation because it's what I will be reading this Valentine's Day and I haven't read it yet. So I can't really recommend it to you guys. I can just inform you on what I'm reading. So the last book that I'm recommending is the first in a series. So these are all standalones, but this one is the first in a series. Get a Life Chloe Brown is part of a trilogy, but it follows each of the different Brown sisters. So it can be read as a standalone too. But this one is actually the first book in like a series series where it follows these characters um, in a trilogy and it it's more of just like a fun recommendation. It's one of my guilty pleasure reads. It's something so easy and that is The Selection by Kira Cast. Now this book just has such a special place in my heart for it is the first book that I ever read that made me fall in love with reading. It is the first book that I read that made me re-fall in love with reading and start this channel and really just discover my passion for all of these different genres and characters and worlds and series and authors. So I had to recommend it as just an easy, fun, quick romance that you guys can read this Valentine's Day because it has done so much for me in my reading life that I just had to recommend it to you guys. It is basically the best way that I can explain it and the way that I thought was just me explaining it, but like it's a really popular way to explain it is it is the Royal Bachelor on steroids basically. So it's sort of girl, her name is America and she unwillingly enters to become the next princess of Aaliyah. That's how I say it. I'm not sure how you say the actual place's name. I think it's Aaliyah. Um, and she ends up being one of the selected and she meets Prince Max and she's on the Royal Bachelor. It's about her coming to terms with the life that she could have and her trying to figure out if this is a life that she even wants because again she didn't enter the selection with her own will and her own choice. She was kind of bribed and persuaded into entering it so it is so fun and 
America is just such a spitfire, so this is something that I would recommend. It's just easy, it's fun, and it holds a special place in my heart. All right, so the last book that I'm going to be talking about or attempt to talk about is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. Now this is my personal Valentine's Day read, so I have not read it myself. I don't really know what it's about other than what's on the back of the book and what I've heard through the bookstagram community. Now this book is about Jasmine and she has a very, very public, messy breakup and Ashton, who's our love interest, I believe I'm right in saying, he just got killed off of his last telenovela. Um, so he is trying to transition from telenovelas to the American screen and American audience and improve his career that way. Now the two end up having a really, really, really unfortunate meeting apparently. And I guess they don't like each other. They don't get along. It was really awkward. I'm not quite so sure. And they decide that they need to practice on their chemistry and get to know each other in order to play convincing characters that are in love on the show that they are casting on. And through these like rehearsals and practices and getting to know each other, their on-screen performance really blossoms and improves. However, it says that the media spotlight on Jasmine soon threatens to destroy her new image and expose Ashton for his most closely guarded secret. So I don't know too much about this book, obviously, because I haven't read it, but I just wanted to share with you guys on what I would be reading on this Valentine's Day. So I'm super, super excited. I've heard some really good things and I'm also hoping that it is a little bit like Jane the Virgin in the sense of like the drama and like the fun because I loved Jane the Virgin. I've heard some other people comparing it. So I'm hoping that it's a little bit similar. Obviously different premise, you know, Jane and Jane the Virgin isn't a telenovela star, but I'm excited. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of books. That was a lot of talking. That was a lot of me rambling. Um, and making mistakes and horribly describing some of my most favorite romance books. If you have liked any of these recommendations, please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel as I will be posting on a regular basis. It won't be five months again, I promise you that, but I don't know when I'll be back with another video. All I know is that I love filming for you guys and I had so, so, so much fun filming today. So this is a mammoth stack of book recommendations that I recommend with all of my heart. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are reading this Valentine's Day or any of your favorite romance books because I'm on the lookout for more um, as it is my favorite genre to read. So I love you guys all so, so, so much. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.